David was not only a psychiatric patient of mine, he was also a dear friend. Many years after Becky died and David disappeared, I learned that Becky had a twin sister. She contacted me recently requesting a visit. She said she needed to talk to me. It was extremely important. I didn't know what to make of it. I had a bad feeling, a really bad feeling. Against my better judgment, I set up an appointment for her to see me. It was a tragic story, but true nevertheless. David and Becky's relationship went sour. David broke up with Becky. Becky found out that David had been cheating on her with a woman named Sandy. Becky sought revenge, driving David out to an isolated wooded area and then chasing him through the woods with a loaded handgun. During the chase, David lost his glasses and mistook Sandy for Becky and struck her with a large stick, which eventually paralyzed her. Later, Becky, still intent on revenge against David, terrorized him and his girlfriend at their home. David fought back and killed her with what would eventually be known as the kill stick. I'm the only musically talented one in my family. I brought my guitar. I wrote a song about my sister. I thought you might like to hear it. Just like Becky, the kill stick didn't start out bad. It just ended up that way. It started out as a healthy branch on a healthy, beautiful tree in the middle of a picturesque wooded area. Similarly, Becky started her life as an innocent, beautiful young child, looking for acceptance and love. I want to thank you for agreeing to see me. It was important for me to have this meeting with you. Why was this so important to you? Closure. We've both been affected by this terrible tragedy. It's been over 20 years. I've tried to call David and Sandy on several occasions, but with no luck. I know David was your good friend. Yes, he was. And it was unfortunate that in defending himself, he ended the life of your sister, your twin sister. I'm sorry for your loss. And I lost a dear friend when David went missing all those years ago. Due to a storm or disease or age, the healthy tree limb became separated from the tree and fell to the ground. It then proceeded to slowly decay and die, just like Becky, after her own true love David broke up with her. She started to die inside. We believe David suffered from recurring nightmares about Becky and her mother, that it eventually drove him insane and that he's now in an institution. David never forgave himself for paralyzing Sandy. Some say he committed suicide. I don't know what the truth is anymore. Frankly, I'm not sure I want to know. Before the stick could wither away and die on the ground, it was found and used unknowingly for a sinister purpose unbeknownst to the user. A mistake that gave new life to the branch, as well as a name, the kill stick. So what was Becky like? Tell me about her. She was a really good kid, loving, caring, and all that changed after her relationship with David, after it all went sour and he broke up with her. 
My father was abusive when we were kids, to us and my mother. Eventually, my mother sent us off to live with my grandmother. But Becky came back to live with my mom. She wanted to protect her from my dad. Over the years, Becky and I lost touch, but our bond as twins never left us. Even after many years and miles apart, I could feel her presence, her thoughts, and I was sure she felt the same way. Those feelings continued even after she died. We remained close that way. The kill stick finally lived up to its name after the death of Becky. It was no longer merely a tree limb or a branch. It had turned into something sinister, evil. Unfortunately, Becky had followed that same path. I'm sorry your sister died. You know David was just defending himself. I know, but it still hurts so much. She's dead, but like I told you, I can feel her presence. She has a hold on me, a power over me. There were rumors. Rumors? What do you mean? There are people who were close to her during her final days that said she was into the black arts, demons, witchcraft, mind control. They say her spirit is trying to possess me now and others that she knew. <laughs> A little out there, don't you think? You don't really believe all that stuff, do you? Not really, no. But that's not the worst of it. Some say she's still alive. She never died. She used black magic to give others the illusion that she was dead. Slowed her heart rate down, that sort of thing. And had others help carry out her plan. She faked her own death. Are you serious? It's just a rumor. Nothing more. A crazy story. Just like they say she's alive and living alone in the woods, waiting for her chance. Chance? To return. To get revenge on anyone who has slighted her or betrayed her. And thus the kill stick exists on many levels. Alive and dead, good and evil, lost and found. It was only a fallen tree branch, a decaying limb, and yet it seemed to reflect human life and its many ups and downs and struggles. Years after my sister was killed, I tried to locate her grave without any luck. I was told by a family member that her ashes were scattered. She wasn't a monster, you know. She started out as a good person. Well, I don't think anyone is born evil. Life, circumstances, many things can change a person, including your sister. Dear Lord, please give me strength. Her hold on me is strong. Help me to resist. Please, God, help me. You um, said you were composing a song about Becky. Yes. A work in progress about her life, how she was essentially a good person who got lost. It's about her hardships and struggles. The lies and the rumors. And you know what they say about rumors. Sometimes they turn out to be true. I'm sorry. I can't help it. She's making me do this. Are you Becky? Answer me. 
Are you Becky? Eventually, the bad branch dies, decays, and becomes part of the earth, and in doing so, continues the cycle, and one day another branch will fall, and before it has a chance to decay, perhaps it will become something else, perhaps it will become another kill stick.